Games based on licensed properties are often hit or miss. There are some truly great examples out there. Just look at Macross Scrambled Valkyrie and, of course, Area 88. But all too often, a licensed title ends up just being a quick, dirty affair to snag some extra merchandising cash. As the successor to Transformers Generation 1, Sunrise and Takara's Yusha or Brave series not only led to a decent resurgence of super robot anime in the 90s, but also had a similar emphasis on toy merchandising. Of course, all kinds of representation in video games would follow. As such, the second in the series, Tayo no Yusha Firebird, was adapted into video game form by Irem the year after its initial anime release. Though Firebird is perhaps better known for a modern meme nowadays, its Famicom and Game Boy titles race an eyebrow with us for very obvious reasons, which is where we're picking up. In this episode of Bullet Heaven, we're taking a look at Tayo no Yusha Firebird for the Famicom. Tayo no Yusha Firebird, or Brave Fighter of the Sun Firebird, is a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up developed and published by Irem in 1992. A version for the Game Boy, Firebird GB, was also released the same year but has several key differences we'll examine another time. As far as licensed video games go, Firebird has some interesting wrinkles and features that make it seem pretty compelling. Let's take a closer look. Played over the course of four stages, the gameplay in Fiber is split into several phases, each with distinct features. Basically, each of these stages is really three and one, with the exception of stage four, essentially breaking the game up into ten-ish stages. The first part has players take control of the Baron team, a mixed terrestrial and aerial squad of five semi-sentient machines that form up to create the Thunder Baron in the anime. Players can choose between the Ace, Road, Drill, Aqua, and Sky Barons to start, and can switch between them at will by accessing a menu with the A button. Despite being ground-based, the Ace, Road, and Drill Barons move at a satisfying rate, especially with a speed pickup, but will be impeded by various terrestrial barriers and obstacles. The Aqua and Sky Barons can move around the screen unimpeded. Their weapons are fired with the B button and can be upgraded to a maximum level of 3 by picking up dedicated power items. Most of the Barons have a very slow rate of fire, but they get the job done, especially once powered up. The Baron's primary objective is to perform specific missions in the beginning of each stage. Players will destroy time bombs, collect life support pods, and deploy anti-gravity machines as the game progresses. These phases are also timed, meaning that players unable to meet their objectives will need to try again. Thankfully, the player's time can be greatly increased with a time extend item. The second phase has the player take control of the fire jet, one of Fiber's disguises. It has greatly improved firepower, though the ship is quite a bit larger than the Baron's. Starting with a large forward-firing cannon that can be charged by holding the B button to unleash a large cannon burst, players can collect additional non-chargeable weapons, numbered 1 for a twin machine gun, 2 for rockets, and 3 for a rather powerful homing missile attack. Similar to the Barons, players can open up a small sub-menu to select any of these collected weapons at any time. Later stages replaces the fire jet with the fire shuttle, which is functionally identical. The third phase has main character Katori forming up into the mecha Firebird itself. A prompt in the second phase has players press the select button to change into Firebird, and the subsequent phase is very similar to the fire jet and fire shuttle. Players even have access to all of the same weapons collected in the jet phase. With the exception of the default weapon being Firebird's sword, it too can be charged up, which in turn launches a large phoenix shot downrange. This shot is very powerful and comes in very handy when fighting bosses. It's worth mentioning that the homing missiles are almost a secret item, as players will need to wait for some time after the change prompt in Phase 2 for it to spawn. This can happen either during or after the prompt appears. In this regard, the player's patience is rewarded since there's no time limit in the second phase. Each stage ends with a battle versus a large boss, all of which are typically easily defeated with either homing missiles and, of course, the charged Firebird sword. In the end, while there is a decent amount of variety and quite a bit of overall playtime in any given run, Fiber it isn't terribly exciting. This is a game that only really works best with younger players, or those that are super, super new to shooting games. This is especially evident in the default Kenta mode, but even the harder Katori mode is insanely easy. This has largely contributed not only to having both a life gauge and a life stock, but also the many 1-up and life recovery items distributed to the player throughout every stage. 
even though dying sees players restarting the stage phase they fell in, it never really feels as if the tables are ever really against the player. Special heavenly items can also be collected which have various effects depending on the stage, but typically destroy everything on screen. Add to that the fact that nothing more than the Sky Baron is needed for any given Baron phase, and it makes the whole idea of having a bunch of choice moot outside of fire pattern preference. The fact remains, those looking for a challenge won't find one here. It's a neat game from the outside looking in, but in practice it's firmly meh. The gameplay might be varied, if boring, but the scoring is dead simple, just shoot things and get a score. That's almost all there is to it, however players can also rescue people during the Baron phase. A bonus will be awarded at stage end based on how many of these people have been saved. It's really nothing to write home about, but it's something. Being based on an anime, it's no surprise that there's a decent amount of exposition in Fiber, though in the grand scheme of things there isn't especially much of it. Being in Japanese, those without knowledge of the language might be left in the dark, though translated ROMs are said to exist. Graphically, Fiber is surprisingly solid, with huge sprites and a good amount of color and detail, however, a large amount of flicker will occur in some areas. Meanwhile, the key characters from the anime are well represented in their 8-bit pixel art forms. The sound is maybe not as strong as the visuals though, many of the tunes are pretty catchy, but the overall quality of the music and the sound effects is a little on the cheap side of things. So when it all comes down to it, how does Tayo no Yusha Firebird stack up? Let's take a look. Firebird's control is actually surprisingly sharp and generally easy to get the hang of. There's no auto fire here, but a turbo controller isn't even really needed. Firebird is pretty much as easy as a Famicom shooting game can get. It feels as if it would actually take effort not to 1cc this one. With its stages having multiple phases, save for the fourth stage, the overall length of the game paired with its less than engaging challenge ends up having Firebird over say its welcome slightly. Visually speaking, Firebird is generally good with large sprites and clear visuals. Some flicker rears its head in some sections though. The soundtrack in Firebird is actually fairly decent, however it still feels a little on the cheap side and the sound effects are weak. While Fiber does some really interesting things with multiple setups depending on the stage phase, its laughable challenge ends up squandering the whole thing, and it lands slightly below average. Especially when it comes to loose carts, Fiber's low cost balances out its less than ideal gameplay giving it a value that we feel is good enough. Don't go paying too much for it though. Is this a critical analysis? We'd like to think so, Katori. As a laid-back, licensed shmup, Fiber does what it does in a way that anyone can see the end with little effort. On the one hand, this is good news for the greenest of shooting newbies. On the other, while we mildly enjoyed our time with it, we found the experience as a whole to be rather questionable. You can get a copy of Fiber for Famicom fairly easily at auction. That was a neat little detour, but we need to get back on track for 2022. This time for real, we're diving into Blazing Rangers on the next episode of Bullet Heaven. In the meantime, what's your favorite licensed game, shooting or otherwise? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you all again in the next episode.